Hey, Kim, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Excellent. Woohoo! Yay! All right, go yes. ahead and take it away. I was having a heart attack. <laughs> awesome. So um, I hope everybody's staying more, warmer than I am. We, I am in Missouri, and we, it is very cold here, but I shouldn't complain for all my friends up north. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about a couple key enhancements in intercompany um, with Dynamics GP. Now, really briefly, I just want to talk about what is GP intercompany, because it's one of those modules that people kind of know about, but they don't really know about. So GP intercompany is predicated on the fact that you have multiple company databases. So I have company A, I have company B, separate GP company databases two integration points with intercompany. From an origin company, I can stipulate or start an intercompany entry as either a journal entry or as a payables transaction. Now, in either of those cases, when I initiate that activity in the origin company, I'm going to be sending over to the destination company solely a journal entry. Okay. So the origin company, it can start as a journal entry, it can start as a payables invoice. In the destination company, it's ultimately going to end up as a um, journal entry. So with that being said, let's just take a quick look at the actual entry here. So when I do an intercompany entry, the key is going to be to record it by marking the intercompany box. I then can put it in a batch. You can see I was doing some intercompany before. And then it behaves much like any other journal entry, okay? But here's the key difference. When I come down to the actual debits and credits, you'll see that there's a company ID column that's now available. So I can come here, and I can click my lookup, and I can pick in my existing company the account that I want to use. And let's say I'm going to allocate some of my administrative wages over to another company. Now, in the second line, if I click the lookup next to company ID, you can see I can actually pick my LLC. And when I click the lookup in this case, I'm going to get a different chart of accounts. So instead of getting the chart of accounts that I'm used to in the source company here, I'm going to actually get the destination company's chart of accounts. Now what happens behind the scenes with an intercompany entry, whether it be a payables one or a journal entry, is it's simply going to balance these entries by creating the due to and the due from. So in the source company, it's going to balance the entry with a debit to the due to, due from. And in the destination company, it's going to balance it with a credit with the corresponding due to, due from. Those things are defined in the intercompany relationship setup, and that's going to be under the administration page. But I want to talk specifically about some of the enhancements to intercompany that come with GP 2015. Now the first one is one, you know, it's funny, I've had people ask for this so much, and it was kind of fun when this all came down and we knew what was going to be in 2015. It was kind of fun to go back to some of these clients and say, guess what, you're getting what you wanted. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. So here under inquiry, on the financial side, we have the journal entry inquiry window. Don't know if you've ever used this, but journal entry inquiry window. And in versions prior to 2015, we were a little limited when we were looking at intercompany entries. So you can see this is an intercompany entry that I did earlier that is essentially the same entry that I just made, which was going from my administrative payroll in the origin company and attributing it to the management payroll in the destination company. However, in prior versions, after I posted, when I went and looked up this journal entry, all I would see would be the entry on the origin side. So notice that I now see the complete balanced entry on the origin side only. Okay? So I didn't have a lot of visibility to, I didn't have any visibility to, what actually happened on the destination company side without actually going to the destination company. So it's kind of a bummer, right? I don't want to have to switch companies. I've heard people complain about it. I don't want to have to go over there, look up the audit trail code, find it to figure out what happened on the destination side. Well, with GP 2015, we now have an intercompany box in the bottom left-hand corner of the journal entry inquiry window. When I click on this, I am going to see the corresponding entry in the destination company. So let's look at the difference here. So here I have the entry that was in the origin company. It's balanced with the due to, due from. 
By clicking the Enter Company box or button, I can now see what happened in the destination company as well. And it identifies it that it was indeed in the destination company, which is my TW2 company instead of TWO. So this kind of visibility allows me to lace things together. One of the greatest benefits of the intercompany module is if I use the intercompany functionality and if I do not catch my do to do from for any other reason, they will always balance. They will always eliminate when we do consolidations on the financials. So it's a very positive thing. But now I can see both of those in the same place. Now the other piece of this, I go right here is another piece of enhancement is with regards to the payable side. So the payable side works much like the journal entry. Um, if I wanted to do a payable transaction and attribute it to an intercompany, I simply mark it as intercompany, and then my distributions work just like they did on the journal entry. I pick a company, I pick the expense account, so you don't pick the do to do from, you just pick where you want the money to go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that. But one of the side, or kind of one of the downsides of the payables was if I ever went back and voided the payable. So in prior versions, if I were to void an invoice with intercompany, it would have only voided the origin portion of the intercompany. Okay? So I want to just show you the message that now displays. So now if I come to my void open, and I come here to Ace Travel, and I come down, and here is an entry that I created earlier. Okay? Click on that. Notice that I now get a message. What does that message say? This transaction was originally marked as an intercompany transaction. The void transaction will also be created in other companies. So here's the key. Okay. Prior versions, if I voided the invoice and it had intercompany, it would have only voided the origin side of the entry. In the current version, GP 2015, if I void a payables invoice and it has in our company, it will actually create the destination company, general ledger journal entry. Okay, again, it's only journal entries. The destination company, general ledger journal entry for me for the correcting void. Those two key enhancements are things that can help with the validity of the inner company and the ease of use in ensuring that your do to and do from balance at the end of the month when you're consolidating for your financials. And with that, those are the two main enhancements. And I think I'm just under the 10-minute mark, so I have time for a couple questions, Kim, if that's allowed. It's allowed. Excellent. All right. Okay. Here's one from Stephanie. It says, is there a report that you can run to look at intercompany transactions? Yes. Now, I haven't checked the, the easiest report, and we can actually run it right now because we can just be wild and crazy that way is here under reports financial would be the cross-reference report. And we'll actually do the cross-reference by source, uh, actually by audit trail code. Let's see if I can do it without having to have the, yeah, I'd have to have the audit trail code. So you can run the cross-reference by audit trail code report. The, the only downside of that, so, so um, let me back up a second. Let me actually show you here what I'm talking about. When you post an intercompany entry, it actually gets its own audit trail. So if you look here, see if it's in the list. Yeah, right there. So you can see this ICTHS and ICTRX in the list of audit trail codes. That's for um, intercompany transactions and intercompany transactions posted to a historical year. So any posting that has intercompany is going to get an intercompany audit trail code. So the easiest way to pull those is to pull those by um, the audit trail code. And you can pull for a range of audit trail codes, because audit trail codes are going to be incremental. So you can pull from you know, audit trail code 1 through audit code 12, audit trail code 12. But it will only show you what exists in that database. Okay? The inquiry window is doing something special, because it's going out and pulling the corresponding audit trail code from the other company. Um, but the reporting, I believe, will still only report on the origin company. But then you can go over to the destination and pull the same. Okay. Here it goes. Um, can you post to multiple companies at once? 
the intercompany button on the journal entry doesn't or inquiry didn't appear to bring up a list of offset entries. The intercompany button on the inquiry window? Is that what the right. question was? Can you the repeat? Intercompany it? button on the journal entry inquiry didn't appear to bring up a list of offset entries. You mean if you have more than one company on the same entry? Is that yep. the Okay, so I think what it will do in that particular case is if you notice, let me just pull this up because I only have one with one company. But I believe what it will do in that case is you'll actually be able to select the other companies from the list. So you'll be able to see your other destination entries. If that answered the question. All right. This is also here's one. Can you void an intercompany um, journal entry? You can, but keep in mind that void is only going to void void in the sense of a true void in the general ledger. Actually, is just an unposted activity. If you're talking about backing out and correcting, I don't do not believe that that will. I, I'm not. I haven't verified that in 2015, but to my knowledge that exists the same way it always has, which means if you need to do a correcting entry to a previously posted intercompany, you would simply do another intercompany entry as the opposite. Andy asked the questions. Just want to confirm there's still no intercompany functionality in sales order processing transactions as of GP 2015. Correct, Amundo. Yeah, if you All need right. intercompany beyond GL and AP, and you need impact on the destination company beyond just general ledger, you're going to be looking at a third party. Okay. What third parties have you uh, um, seen being used well? The, the two that are most popular, I've always had an affinity for Nolan, but I only think that's because Nolan has an advanced uh, intercompany module. Um, but I honestly think it's just because I worked for a company, and that's in Colorado and Nolan's based in Colorado, but it is a good product and it has a lot of functionality beyond what GP offers. Um, MC Squared has a product that some of my coworkers at BKD are fans of that is also an advanced intercompany posting kind of thing. And then, of course, the, the mothership of intercompany, when you start talking about intercompany within a single database is when you start talking about things like multi-entity management, which is a, a binary stream product. But that is that's definitely the, the mothership, um, whereas the uh, MC squared and the um, Nolan products are more just bump up from the standard GP functionality. All right. One last question. We'll let everybody go. Lenny asked the questions. When you void a check that has an intercompany transaction, it will create a batch in the designate company. Oh. Now when you avoid the check, because the check just exists in the destination, in the, sorry, the check just exists in the origin company where you're running the check, and it just has AP and cash on it. It's only once you go and void the invoice, because the invoice would be the portion with the inner company on it. When you void the invoice, then you would get the destination company entry. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out another five minutes, everybody. I think everyone got their answers. Thank you so much, Christina, for your valuable time. Certainly appreciate it. Uh, we'll have a copy of this recording and also um, a deck for you with her contact information put up on the website.